this is going to be a brief introduction to the Office 365 documents. This is going to be very similar to Word, although there are some, it doesn't have as many features in the web based version as on your normal desktop version. So, this is what your SkyDrive account will look like when you log in. You'll have a little profile section here. You've got My Documents, documents that you can follow, and that'll make more sense later, and documents that are shared with you. And then here are folders and documents that are yours. So the first thing is uh, when you want to create a new document, you have a plus sign right here and it says New Document. We'll click on that and you'll see that you've got several options. You can create Word documents, spreadsheets, presentations, OneNote notes, surveys that are based in Excel, and new folders. And all of this stuff lives in the cloud. So if you log into a public library computer and you log into your Office 365 account, you would have access to all this stuff. Anywhere on the planet where you have access to the web, you can access your documents. You can also upload existing files. When you click this, you can just choose a file and you can search through your various document folders to find what you want to upload to 365. And then again, it will be available to you anywhere that you have internet access. So what we're going to do now is just look at creating a simple document. So we're going to choose new document and word document. We're going to give it a name. So we'll call this test2. And so it'll say word web app. And all of a sudden you'll notice that you are looking at something that looks very similar to Word. There aren't as many options, you don't have as many tabs on the ribbon and so forth. But in terms of typing basic text, most of your main tools are there. You've got bold, italics, underline, change the font, there are many options, change font sizes, justification is right here, the spacing between lines, bullets, numbers, lots of different uh, options for you. You've got an insert tab here where you can insert page breaks, tables, here's where you can insert pictures, links, header and footer, page numbers. You can adjust your page layout on this tab. View we're going to come back to because that's going to be more important later. And you have the option to open in Word also. So if I click this and I'm on a computer that actually has Word installed, it will tell me that it's going to launch the Word application and open this document there, but I'm not going to do that now. So I'm going to continue editing in Word Web App. So this is back to the document, and just to show you, it looks, operates very similar to regular Word. So this is my first sentence and types very quickly, very responsive. Um, I can highlight and again do a lot of the normal things that you would do in your desktop version of Word. Make it bold, underline. And you'll notice that there is no save option. So if you look under file, you can save as and you can change it, but there is no just regular save. And that's because uh, documents in Office 365 save automatically. There's actually uh, a few reasons why it does that. One is you know that it's online. So you want to make sure that you're not having documents messed up by connectivity issues or anything like that. So Office 365 has it save automatically. The other thing is, the next thing we're going to look at is sharing. So you can have people working in real time on a document. So that has to be seamless. So with each keystroke, it's basically saving that into this document. So we'll actually take a look at that now. When you share, you've got a couple of options. You can just be inside your SkyDrive account and click on the little ellipses down here. And this will present share options uh, for you down here. And you can also just be inside the document. 
there's a share tab right here. And when you click that, it brings up that same menu for your share options. So here's a couple things about sharing. First off, when you create a document inside SkyDrive, it is private and only you can see it when you are logged in. So no one else has access to it. However, you can add different types of access to different people that you want. So for example, I could allow everyone in this organization to either edit or view, or I could add just a specific person. So for example, I could add Elliot, and I can make him just a viewer or just an editor. And I can change this at any point I want as well. For example, I might want Elliot to work on this document for a day, so I give him edit access. But the next day, I might want to keep it so I'll, I'm the only one who can make changes. So maybe I'll give him just view access, or I might even just remove him from the document. So once again, it's a private document. I can include a message when I've added a person, inviting them to the document, letting them know that they have access. And I can require sign in so that only people signed in can do anything with this document. There's a few more options down here. I can choose not to send the email. And that way, when I add people, it just automatically gives them access and doesn't send an email. Where something like this is important is, let's say that you have 30 students in a class all invite you to the document. Well, you probably don't want 30 emails arriving in your account. So instead, you should tell them to uncheck this and You'll, give, you'll get access to all their documents, but you won't receive the 30 emails. And you can hide those options when you're done. So this would be just inviting specific people that you want to have access. The other thing that you can do is get a link. And this will create a link on the web that, again, you can choose who has access to. So at the moment, it would be view only, or we could do edit. And so if we wanted people to edit this, we could create a link. And it says anyone with this link can see and edit this file. So this becomes kind of the default mode for this. If, if a person gets this, they can read it. There probably won't be a lot of instances where you'll want to do everyone can edit. However, you might want to use the view only link for a lot of different things. For example, if this was your syllabus, you could put this link on your teacher website, make it view only, so only people can only see it. They can't actually make changes into it. And the nice thing about that is anytime you make a change, for example, the start of a new semester, the beginning of a new school year, it'll automatically send those changes to the document on your website, and everyone will still be able to view the new version of it. So things like that that are pretty nice. Uh, it's also a quick way to share with people that maybe you don't know what their contact information is at first. If you're doing a presentation, for example, with colleagues outside of the district, you might not be certain who's going to be in your session. So you can make this view only and provide a link for them to look at the document. So some interesting features. Invite people is inviting specific people that you know are going to want to look at it and then get a link allows anyone to look at it if you want or to edit it. So let's take a look at this in practice. I'm actually going to get a link and just for demonstration purposes I'm going to allow anyone with this link to edit and I'm going to create a link. So now this giant thing down here is the link for this document. To illustrate a guest user, I'm going to go into an incognito window. So now you'll notice that both of these are now open. This is what just someone in the outside world, any random person who came across this link would see. And this is actually me signed in. I'm going to show you what it looks like when two people are editing the document. So first off, when you open it initially, it's just going to be in a read mode. So you're going to choose to edit document, and we're going to edit in the Word web app. 
So now we're back to the space where we have all these features. Then over here, we're going to pretend that we're this other user, and we're going to edit in the browser. And now you'll notice on each screen that you can see Jason A. Paddock is logged in, and there's a guest contributor also editing. On this one, because a person is not signed in, it says guest contributor, and you can see that Jason A. Paddock is also editing. And here's sort of the beauty of Office 365. So you notice I put my cursor down over here as my guest contributor, and immediately in this view over here, you see that a person is typing. So we're going to add some content. I'm going to change this to blue. And you'll notice it's pretty close to real time. As I make changes over here as the guest contributor, Jason Paddock can see it over here. So we're going to change this to blue. And again, it's almost instantaneous, the, the change over here. And then going back, if uh, now this is Jason that's contributing. Um, I'm going to make this red. And it just sees a cursor movement. It doesn't really see the highlight on the guests. But the change, again, is almost instantaneous. So the beautiful part about this is you can share documents. People can work on the documents in real time or in various instances. For instance, I can completely close out of this document. And I'm just going to go to my account so I'm completely outside of that document. And it may show for a little bit longer that Jason A. Paddock is also editing. Now it says it's no longer editing this document. So make some more changes. And then when that person opens a document the next time, the changes are all there. And again, we'll go back into edit mode. And we can continue making changes. In fact, in this case, I'm going to delete those last three additions. And then in a moment, you'll see it delete over here. So a couple nice things about this. Uh, professionally, working on things like lesson plans or letters that need to go out from an organization, anything like that where you have multiple people, they're going to want to be making additions. As well, it's particularly good for writing instruction. Everybody who is involved in the process, whether it be parent, teacher, student, tutor, or anyone else, they can all be invited to the document. Some can be given view access, some can be given edit access, and instead of one copy of the paper being in one person's hand at a time, the working version of the document is always available to all people. So at any point somebody can peek in or a student can ask a question and the teacher can access it from home. Uh, lots of possibilities here. So that is the basics of Office 365 using the Word web app and we'll have more details to come about using this in different ways.